A signal is definitely being sent, is that this is very, very important to Russia and that the international community needs to listen to what Russia thinks about the post-war settlement in the Caucasus. So, very, very important. But just how important is the outcome of this debate? It's symbolic at this point, and rhetoric. It's rhetorical. Uh, Russia is really saying we're at the, 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 the abyss there. We can step over it. We can go over the line. The dots are being connected right now. The, President Medvedev has said, made it very clear that Russia will recognize the, the desires of the people on the ground, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Now we have uh, the uh, legislative bodies uh, uh, moving in that direction as well. It's really up to Mr. Medvedev to connect those dots. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime fast. But the outcome is going to be fairly obvious, isn't it? That there the will be support. The outcome is obvious to me is that South Ossetia and Abkhazia will never be ruled by Tbilisi ever again. That's the only thing we know. There's a lot of unknowns out there. How fast would they go, go to, uh, move towards independence? We don't know. What is the process? Uh, there's a debate today. Then, as you said earlier, it goes to the President Medvedev. And then what would happen after that if he agrees that, yes, Russia will recognize their independence? What happens after that? Well, it, then, then we're going to have the international community saying they agree or they disagree. Um, you, you have other members of the United Nations Security Council that would veto their seat at the, uh, in the General Assembly. They would never, like Kosovo. We'll get another Kosovo. Uh, that is not a country that is not recognized in the world. Though uh, this may not really make a whole lot of difference to South Ossetia and Abkhazia because that's the existence they've been living with for the last 15 years. Peter, uh, we can now go live to the Federation Council, the, the Russian Parliament's upper house. We can bring you the pictures of uh, the session which is about to begin here in central Moscow. Uh, now the Federation Council members along with their colleagues in the State Duma, they've interrupted as we've already said their summer break and uh, we can now see them uh, in session there discussing the future status of the breakaway republics of South Ossetia. And because, yeah. Are we going to be hearing from the, the, the presidents of these uh, breakaway yes, uh, republics? Uh, um, from Abkhazia, for sure. Um, certainly, they're going to be making a statement. They, they're going to appreciate the support that they're getting from Russia. It's very, very important after what they have gone through. Um, but I really want to stress this. The, the, the Tbilisi has been pulled out of the equation here right now. This is very important for Russia to tell, to tell the world that they will, it, will not, it will not tolerate another conflict right in, in, that, in that part of the world. In view of the recent events, just how much support will or cooperation will there be from the West uh, for, for, for these uh, attempts for independence? Well, they'll, they'll say this is um, uh, unprecedented. It's so it's, it's inappropriate, um, and then Russia is going to turn around and say, "What about Kosovo? You did this to Kosovo." Really, it's not about South Ossetia or Abkhazia. It's about Kosovo, about the precedent that a small number of powerful countries in the West can determine who has independence and who doesn't against international law. Now, Russia will say, "Look, this is international law. You've broken it. But if you break it, everyone else is going to keep breaking it. Why should we adhere to the rules?" See, this is what's really wrong. Personally, I will. I hope that Russia th thinks long and hard before giving legal recognition to these two breakaway republics because there's a certain number of events that start playing out and it may not be good for the world it may not be good for Russia if you were to adhere to traditional democratic process you would listen to the people well this is what we're, we're seeing right now and, and I give Russia a lot of respect for that they're listening to the people on the ground um, and Mr. Saakashvili has lost the moral authority, I stress this, the moral authority to have control over these breakaway republics. And Russia is saying it's taking responsibility for the security in the Caucasus. Uh, perhaps could we go to the status quo where we see a frozen conflict continue? Well, it, Bill, that's probably the most likely outcome that we're going to see in the, in the medium term. This, there are frozen conflict. And it, as I like to keep saying on, on RTs, there are frozen conflicts for a reason, because the resolution is so very difficult. Well, we're talking, there's a, a lot of talk going on. On, both Houses of Parliament uh, there in central Moscow holding discussions on the breakaway regions. Is this likely to end in a vote or is it just yes, a, absolutely a debate? in a vote and this is also this is very important that this the, the, the Parliament is doing this in the name of the Russian people. This is very important for the Russian people as well that they, they've been watching these events here and they've seen how Russia is going into it will help its citizens around the world. These were citizens that were attacked by Saakashvili in South Ossetia and Abkhazia. This is the moral this is a moral element that we're he, uh, seeing here that Russia Russia's people will be uh, protected uh, uh, across the border. Uh, many people talking at this session. Will it take a long time? I mean, well, we're, we're starting now we right about 10:13 Moscow time. This is going to be a very important venue for a lot of members to express their patriotism and Russia's foreign policy and how it's changing. Yes, I think we're going to have a lot of commentary here before. The
all about. And uh, as, as we're watching the pictures here, we're bringing them to you here on RT. Peter and I are just discussing the implications of this meeting. Uh, if you just joined us, that talking about the, uh, the, the support that's going to be measured within the, the State Duma today. Um, some people have likened this situation to where the regions may get recognition from only Russia right. and very similar to the Cyprus situation where Turkey recognizes northern Cyprus. Do, do you see a parallel it's with that? It's very possible here. It's very possible when they're not ironing out, all, you know, not crossing all the uh, T's and dotting the I's. It's a very, very sticky situation here. But let's think about the people in South Ossetia and Abkhazia. They're going to have a sense of relief that they're going to be protected. Finally, there was a ceasefire for 10 years, but it wasn't enough. War happened anyway. This will give them confidence that the, the, the Georgians won't do it ever again. And then the implications for NATO expansion is out there too. Will NATO uh, uh, absorb a, a member like this that has such a difficult territorial problem? Probably not.